My name is Harriet. Some of y'all don't know much about me, I bet, because they don't teach much history in these modern day schools. Look at these shoes. About woe out. Leather almost gone. But I can still sing a song. Because these shoes then took me where I wanted to be. These shoes walked me to free. I was born on a plantation in Maryland. My master, Master Brodus, was mean to me. As a child on up, he did things to me that made me be ashamed of me. But I was a slave child. What could I do? I promised myself I'm going to get away from you if it's the last thing I ever do. Look here. You see that little hole right here in my shoe? That's where Master Brodus took a hammer and hammered it through. Through the shoe, through my foot, and clean through the sole. And that was my punishment for breaking that little bowl. One day he took a great big old piece of lead. And because I was too slow, he hit me on the head. Everybody thought I was just plain old dead. Because I went into a deep, dark sleep. And they say that I slept for more than a week. My mama, my mama would sit by my side at night and weep. And I would sleep. And I would sleep. After that, I'd have these mysterious spells where I'd just fall asleep and nobody could tell if I was alive or if I was dead. Because they couldn't wake me up for two or three hours, they said. Then suddenly I would just open my eyes and smile. And most of this happened when I still was a child. I had to wait till I was about 24 before I knew I couldn't take slavery not another day more. I knew if I stayed in Maryland, I would die. So I had to escape. I had to try. But it wasn't easy. There were slave catcher men roaming all over the state way back then. And if they caught you running away, you might not live to see another day. And if you did live, you sometimes wish you had died. I seen them throw a man into a big old pot of hot oil and cooked him till he fried. Back then they'd whip us hanging from a tree and they wouldn't stop whipping till they could see some flesh hanging free from our bones. We had no homes, we lived in a shack. So many in one, we were almost stacked on top of each other like sardines in a can. I never regretted the day that I ran. I ran in these shoes, no such thing as a car. I ran in these shoes, I ran so far. I ran from Maryland, from slavery. I ran for my life so it could be free. Sometimes I look down from heaven up high and whenever I look, I, I start to cry. Cause I see that y'all still running too. The savages is still killing you. And I pray for you. I pray for you. One day I asked God if I could come down. She looked at me and gave a slight kind of frown and asked me why I wanted to come down. Cause down here, I be earthly in these wore out shoes and this raggedy old gown. She said up here in the spirit, you are divine. Up here you have wings and you can fly. Down there, you're almost crippled and you are old. Down there you have them shoes with a hole in the sole. Up here you'll be safe by my side. Down there you'll be controlled by racist lies. But I told God, I need to go there where my people is suffering and God I swear and all that is dear to me. I'll just stay one day. So here I be. Cheering, I come here today to talk to you to try to tell you what you ought to do, to tell you what in slavery we had to do so that our then unborn would become the now you and how the hope of the slave would create a new day for you and how our people survived slavery and we came through. After I got free, somebody had the nerve to ask me, do you believe in hell? I told them certainly I do, I was born there. I was raised there. That's where all us slaves dwell. Yeah, we lived in hell, and there were more devils than sin, and all of them wrapped up in fine clothes and white skin. After I got free, I wasn't satisfied. 
All I did was sit around and cried. Because my mama, my daddy, my sisters, my bro, although still alive, were still in slavery though. So I had to go back to set them free. I wanted my family to be free like me. But it wasn't an easy thing though. After freeing my family, I made many trips more using the Underground Railroad and their life-saving tips. We learned to walk crouched down so we wouldn't get hit to keep their feet from freezing. They stepping horse dung, but they couldn't stand there too long because we'd get caught and get hung. We looked to the heavens, following the North Star, because like I said before, no such thing as a car. We robbed the barks of trees feeling for moss. And that's how we kept ourselves from getting too lost. Some people would grow weary and would want to go back. And I told them, no, we won't give up and we won't backtrack. I said, no, you're going to be free or you're going to be dead. And I got this gun to make sure. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, no, we're going to be free. We're going to be free. Whether dead or alive, that's the way it's going to be. One old man came up to me, said, Harriet, I'm too old. I'm too tired. I just can't go on. I said, then the spot where you stand will be your permanent home. And I meant that thing, Cherry. I meant that thing. Because if he went back, that meant we all would hang. I said, nobody's going back. Nobody is going back. Y'all all got to try. Because the spot where you give up will be the spot where you die. I made many trips. I never had to dig any graves. And I could have saved many more if only they knew they were slaves. So children, I want you to remember and see that that thing they called freedom, it never was free. I thank God Almighty for these shoes on my feet because most slaves didn't have shoes. They walked through their life bare feet.